Hi guys, it's Mrs. Austin, and we have another book to read. This is called How I Became a Pirate. It's by Melinda Long, and the illustrator is David Shannon, and he is one of my favorite illustrators of all time, so I love this book a whole lot. It is a reading level 3.1, and it's worth half a point. So here we go, How I Became a Pirate. Oh look, he's building a sand castle, but there's something out in the ocean. What is it? It's a pirate ship. All right, the book says, pirates have green teeth whenever they have any teeth at all. I know about pirates because one day when I was at the beach building a sand castle and just minding my own business, a pirate ship sailed into view. I knew what it was because its flag had a skull and crossbones on it. And I could hear the pirates singing, hey ho, blow the man down. They were a little off key, which means they didn't sound very good. Oh, now we're at the beach and it looks like everyone's busy. Mom's changing the baby and trying to put sun lotion on her. Look, there's dad in his socks and sandals trying to get the umbrella up. And he's trying to warn them about the pirate ship, but looks like they're too busy. I tried to tell dad, but he was busy setting up the beach umbrella. I tried to tell mom, but she was busy slathering my baby sister with sunblock. So I went back to my sand castle, but I kept an eye on the pirates. By then, they were rowing to shore. When they had landed, the head pirate climbed out of the boat and yelled, Ahoy there, matey! Be this the Spanish main? That would be a place where pirates liked to sail a long time ago. No, I said, this is North Beach. Shiver me timbers, the pirate said. We must have taken a wrong turn at Bora Bora. Bora Bora is an island. He walked around my sandcastle. He looked at the moat, and then he looked back at the crew. I just dug a whole moat, and so I, he thought I was a really good digger because I dug that whole moat out. He says, he's a digger, he is, and a good one to boot. A good one to boot, the others agreed. What be your name, matey? The head pirate asked. Jeremy Jacob, sir, I told him. Well, Jeremy Jacob, he said, you're looking at Braid Beard and his crew. We've been needing a digger like yourself. We have a chest of treasure to bury. Aye, treasure, the other shouted. You're coming with us, Braid Beard told me. I didn't think Mom and Dad would mind as long as I got back in time for soccer practice the next day. Look, can you figure out why he's called Braid Beard? Hmm. I think I know. And what is this that the pirate's holding? A soccer ball? Hmm, I've never seen pirates play soccer. And that is how I became a pirate. Oh look, they're all on the boat. There's Braidbeard and the bird, and all the rest of them. And there's Jeremy Jacob right there. As soon as we were on board, Braidbeard showed me the chest of gold and jewels. Got to find a safe place for this here treasure. It's high time we were off, he announced. We're off, we all shouted. And then we set sail. <gasps> Look, he's got all the treasure. He's got a big giant crown. There is plenty to do on board. The pirates taught me to sing sea shanties which is like songs, the louder, the better, and to say real pirate stuff like landlubber and scurvy dog. By dinner time, I could speak pirate perfectly. I also learned pirate manners. Braidbeard pounded his fist on the table and yelled, down the hatch, me laddies, down the hatch, we all shouted. Braidbeard gulped his food and said, hand over the meat, the meat, we all roared. Nobody told us to finish our spinach because there wasn't any or to chew up our carrots because carrots weren't allowed on board. We talked with our mouths full. You can see they're all talking with their mouths full. I can see that. And nobody said please or thank you. 
They don't have very good manners, do they? Mm -mm, not at all. After dinner, I tried to teach the pirates to play soccer. Oh, I knew that they had a soccer ball, huh? Braidbeard kicked the ball and yelled, Arg soccer! Arg soccer! The crew yelled. Then everybody dove for the ball at once, and it rolled right off the deck. After it, me hearties, Braidbeard commanded. After it, we all whispered. Why do you think they're nervous about getting the ball? Hmm? I think because there's a shark right there. We fought over who would go get the ball, but it didn't matter anyway because a shark came along and swallowed it in one gulp. Well, so much for soccer. By now, it was way past my bedtime, but nobody tells pirates to go to bed or to take a bath or to brush their teeth. Maybe that's why their teeth are green. Pirates sleep with one eye open, just in case. Look, he's got one eye open. And they don't change into pajamas unless they want to. Pirates don't do anything they don't want to, except for maybe swabbing the decks. That means like washing the floors. I wanted to be a pirate forever. Uh-oh, he doesn't look very comfortable, huh? People around him are snoring. It looks like he's trying to go to sleep, but... Even the cat right there is snoring. Oh my goodness. But then I found out what else they don't do. When I couldn't stay awake any longer, I asked Braidbeard to tuck me in and read me a story. Tuck you in, he said. Pirates don't tuck. No tucking, the crew yelled. And the only thing they had to read for a bedtime story was a map. Don't you have any books, I asked. Braidbeard looked confused. Books? I didn't even bother to ask about a good night kiss. It wasn't easy to fall asleep without a story, but I was finally dozing off when a storm broke. Thunder boomed and lightning flashed. I tried to hide under the covers as waves slammed up against the ship, but I kept falling out of my hammock. I couldn't find anyone in the cabin. They were all on deck. Lower the sails, Braidbeard shouted. Batten down the hatches. Everybody ran around yelling and lowering and battening. Nobody had time to sit close and tell me it would be over soon. Nobody even noticed me. I decided I didn't want to be a pirate after all. Just then, flash, crash, crack. Lightning hit the mast, that's the big pole in the middle of the ship, and split it right down the middle. What'll we do now? yelled one of the pirates. We'll have to turn back, said another. But the treasure, hollered Braidbeard. Where will we bury the treasure? I stepped forward. Maybe I can help, I shouted over the wind. I think I know the perfect digging spot. Oh, where are they burying the treasure, hmm? When the storm was over, we rowed back to shore and buried the treasure. We drew a map so we could find the treasure again, but I don't think I'll need it. Look, it says Jeremy Jacob's backyard. I buried it under a tree in his backyard. After that, the pirates repaired their ship and got ready to sail. Before they left, Braidbeard handed me a flag and said, You'll make a fine pirate, Jeremy Jacob. Guard that treasure well. We'll be back to get it soon enough. Soon enough, the crew repeated. If you ever need us, Braidbeard added, just run the Jolly Roger up yonder pole. Up yonder pole, the others shouted. The Jolly Roger is the flag that the pirates have, and they gave it to him. Can you see the flag there? And maybe I will one day. But not today. Do you know why? Because I have soccer practice. Oh, he does like to play soccer. Oh, and what is his soccer team called? They're the Pirates. How perfect is that? So that is how I became a pirate. Bye, guys. <laughs>